In this hour, there's so many prophetic insights coming from many different voices and many of them credible prophets in the body of Christ, but they seem contrary to one another. One might be really kind of negative saying, oh, the times ahead are so difficult, so hard, and you know, their nations are going to drop into the sea and stuff like that. And then others are saying, no, God is good all the time. Everything's going to be great. And there's confusion sometimes over people think, well, well, what do I do? What do I believe? How do I prepare? Do I go and hide out in a cave and store up dried food or water or whatever? Or do I go on as usual? And so today's clip, I want to address some of that. And I'd like you to turn in your Bible to uh, Genesis chapter 2, because a lot of times these kind of, 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 you know, opposite words or what seems opposite, what seems contradictory are not at all. They're just different sides of the same coin, but you have to make sure that you read the right mail. And so I want to say, fear not for the future, you know, because there's good things ahead, but you need to rightly discern what your mail is. Throughout the scriptures, even in the Gospels, you'll see Jesus, for example, uh, giving warning about the end time, even describing the difficult tribulation and stuff. But make sure your name is on the mail, because if it's for outsiders, if it's for those who are not um, walking uh, with him or in covenant with him, then that's for those people. It's not for his covenant children. So anyways, let's take a look at Genesis 3, verse 8. And it says, The Lord God planted a garden toward the east in Eden, and there he placed the man whom he had formed. So God created this, this garden that was full of delight. I think that's kind of cool that God likes gardening. I, I used to like gardening when, when I had more time, but God likes gardening. He likes growing things. He likes watching the beauty come forth and the fruitfulness come forth. So he planted this beautiful garden and he placed man in the midst of it. And it says, out of the ground, the Lord God caused to grow every tree that is pleasing to the sight and good for food. And so everything was delightful. Everything was good. And you might want to say, good, because that's what so describes God and what he does and what he creates. And it says that the tree of life he also created in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So there's this beautiful, beautiful garden and there's this tree in the midst of it called the tree of life. And there's this other tree called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Then in verse 10, it describes a river that flowed out of Eden to water the garden and where it divided into four parts. And one of them was Pishon, which speaks of gold. It was full of gold and different things. So God's garden was just full of riches and glory and abundance and beauty and goodness. And I believe that this parallels the spiritual garden that you live in today, that you are called into by covenant through Christ. It's like a heavenly place of bounty. It's a kingdom place of his goodness. It goes on to describe the different uh, rivers. And then in verse 15, it says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to cultivate it and to keep it to watch over it, and we're to watch over the garden that the Lord has put us in, in the spirit, in this life, as we've been placed in this garden of blessing and goodness. And he says, but, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, verse 16, the Lord God commanded the man, saying, from any tree of the garden, you may eat freely. And that was even the tree of life. Man could eat freely of everything that was good, full of delight. Um, the tree of life, it could eat anything as freely as he wanted to. But from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. Now that word knowledge there means knowledge, perception, skill, and discernment. In other words, it's what you perceive. It's your perspective of what you think. And uh, he says, you, you shall not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You shall not eat, for in that day that you eat from it, you shall surely die. And that word die actually means not only to die, but it means to perish. In other words, if you eat off the wrong tree, you'll start to perish. 
you'll die. It, it, it also um, speaks of penalty, that word. So there's a penalty for eating off that tree. And of course, we know that Adam and Eve did, and there's a huge penalty and separation from God. But let's bring it into our day right now. Through Christ, we have a covenant of blessing. And in my book, In the Zone, which I hope that you all have, and if not, order it on our online store at xpministries.com. Order that book, In the Zone, because it teaches you how to live in the blessing of God. Another book that would be um, amazing for you and it will help you grow is called Create Your World. It teaches you how to create realms and, and uh, influences. You know, it'll help you create a beautiful garden in the world that you live in according to the promises that have already been given to you in Christ. And so we are to live and cultivate that kind of life, a life of blessing. But it says, if you eat off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you're going to die. Don't eat off that tree. What is that? There is a tree in the garden that Adam and Eve could look at, but they weren't to eat of it. When we look through the scripture, there's, there's things that describe the hardship of the day, the day of gross darkness and the darkness that covers the earth and the people and, and you know, the day of the mark of the beast and the fall of Babylon and all of that. These are all things that you read about in the Bible, but they're not for you to eat of. Because if you have eaten of Christ, if he is your bread, if he is your life, if he is your, your, your truth, if you are in covenant with him, then you can look at that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but you don't eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Therefore, when the prophets are speaking about difficult days coming in the earth and even in the nation, you can look upon that tree. It's okay to know about that, but it's not good to eat of that. It's not for you to partake of. You go and eat of the tree of life. Eat of the goodness of the promises of God in the garden that was prepared for you. Nowhere in the scripture, in the New Testament, does it say that in Christ we are to receive bad goods. The scripture says, even Jesus himself said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I came that you would have life and in its goodness or in its abundance, the scripture says. And so make sure that you're eating off the right tree. Don't fear the days ahead. You know, there's going to be two tracks. I see two tracks. I see the track of darkness is going to get darker. Corruption is going to get more corrupt. Yes, that is true. There's going to be shakings. Yes, that is true. But you are of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. What is the other track? The other track is a track of light and goodness. And it gets brighter and brighter as the days go by. Arise and shine because your light has come. Are you going to journey on the track of darkness? Or are you going to stay on what belongs to you, the track of light? And life. So live in this garden of delight. Live in this gar garden of goodness. Eat off the tree of life. It was given to you by your God. Fear not. There's great days ahead. There's goodness coming for you. It has your name on it. God bless you. And I just want to encourage you that if you've been enjoying the different media that XP Ministries has been preparing for you, would you go online to xpministries.com and maybe give a donation in appreciation and in honor of the media that you've enjoyed, or even pray about becoming a Breaker Team partner, a monthly financial giver that will help us continue in our outreach and missions around the world, in evangelism locally and around the world, and in our mandate for media by spreading the gospel um, to the nations and also uh, to create media through the internet uh, that will really bless uh, the unsaved as well as the saved. God bless you. Have a great week.